All right, I'm Jonna Gottsweiler, and I'm with the American Angus Association. So how many of you in here know what certified Angus beef is? Yeah, I think we've got one or two in the room, obviously. So when certified Angus beef began back in 1979, do we all kind of remember what the cow herd looked like? We had a few different colors, didn't we? We didn't have everything as being black like we do today. So I'm going to fast forward a little bit, because in 1999, I don't know how many of you... Uh, kind of paid attention there to the association, but we started a, a network marketing kind of online. It was called ArcNet, and so you could literally list your black hided calves as being for sale on the internet or where they would be selling at the auction barn, video sales, and you could document what sires you would have used for that. And so you were issued an ear tag to show that those calves were a part of the Angus program. Fast forward a little bit because we, we kind of got into the national ID movement there a little bit. Uh, 2003, we all know what happened with BSC. So we, we started calling it Angus Source in 2003 rather than the ArcNet program. And so producers could literally go online, document their sires, uh, say what that group age was of those calves. And then in 2005, we became a USDA process verified program, again, documenting those uh, genetic component and issuing those uh, ear tags. And people could choose between an RFID, a visual, or a match pair set. And so with that, we had agent source verification and, of course, genetic verification uh, for the Angus component. So we're going to kind of fast forward here a little bit more. Um, 2016, we decided to embark upon a very ambitious long-range plan at the American Angus Association. And with that being said, uh, we, we talked to many cow-calf producers, feedlots, uh, industry officials. There were many of you in this room that were actually on our panels when we uh, met in Dallas. Because the American Angus Association wants to be uh, out in front and pretty well a leader in the beef industry. And that's kind of what we heard from many of the industry. Many people in the industry said, hey, you know, you obviously are a great arm to educate and communicate. And so we took that very seriously. And with that being said, uh, there were actually five points to our long-range strategic plan. One of those was genetics, the other commercial, leadership, product, and research. So there were 21 points that went before our board of directors and were passed. One of those was in the commercial department, and that was to create uh, more value to the commercial producers for their feeder calves. And so with that came out uh, two different, well, I shouldn't say two different programs, but one different program. And so we took the genetic component out of the Angus source, and it became Angus Link. Don't know how many of you have heard about that because it was just released this August, so into it, August the 28th, actually. Uh, so it's using a neon green tag to denote that those calves, what their genetic component is. Now, 50% of the sires have to be Angus. 25% of the rest of the sires can be registered with any other breed. And the last 25% can be commercial, okay? So we're going to assign a score. So one of the things I know that we heard earlier this morning was about some of the data. And so I'm going to just kind of flip down here to some of the data that we have. Uh, just because we are uh, kind of data hogs there, uh, we decided, you know, that we thought we could go on in and uh, document that genetic component very well on those feeder calves. And so we've done quite a few trials, and we've been able to uh, provide a beef score, a grid score, and a feedlot score on those calves. And so packers, feedlots would obviously be able to uh, determine if those calves are going to meet the genetic component and grade very well on the grid. Because one of the things that we heard over and over again is we're not getting the value for the bulls that we're buying. We heard that not only from the cow-calf producer, the seed stock producers feel the same way. So they've invested a lot of money in their genetics and trying to sell those bulls, and they don't feel that maybe they were getting their value back because the producers weren't seeing that value whenever they sold those calves at the sale barn or the video auction. So anyway, with that being said, uh, Angus Link was obviously released, so we took the genetic component out of Angus Source. With that, in June of 15th, 
June 15th of this year, we added some additional PVP programs uh, to Angus Source. So we also added the NHTC, the Never Ever 3, a calf management and cattle care and handling. And I want to thank Leanne and, and Mike because they already have put all the information up about all how much value there is in those value-added programs. But more than anything, I guess I want to, real quick, is there anybody in here from Louisiana? Because before I tell the story, I, I probably better check. Okay, so, you know, we were talking earlier today about value-added programs, and maybe small producers don't always feel the value. One of the gentlemen that I had tried to enroll several years ago, he had around 20 head, and he called in, and, and he was like, you know, because I just calve all year round. I'm like, well, you know, you kind of got to designate a spring and a fall. We can't just give you 20 year tags and you just put them in anything, okay? So we've got to do a little more work here. And he's like, lady, you don't understand how this works down here. I'm like, really? Okay. Explain it to me. He says, well, I'm going to tell you what. Every two months, I have to take at least seven head, because that's all that fits in my trailer. And I'm going to tell you my credit card bill that my wife runs up, that's what I've got to pay every two months. So that's how I do my management, all right? So you've just got to understand this. So as you can see, it, it is a little bit trying sometimes to, to educate producers to, to maybe utilize the programs in the most efficient manner. Uh, but by and large, you know, I, I think we all feel very lucky that we're able to work with them so that they can see a little bit of, of extra from their value add. And I always kind of flip through things a little fast, but I, I'm really bad. I don't always use my slides the way I should. Uh, but as I said, we'd created the feeder calf program. But one of the things that we really wanted to do was in, increase things all along the chain so that producers as well as feed yards could see a little bit more value add. Uh, and one of the things that I, I forgot to mention was obviously we hold a lot of data that's been able to be kept safe and secure. And, and I think that's very important because one of the things this morning that we talked about was, was producers are more comfortable working at the local level. I think they're also comfortable working with people that they know very well. Uh, you know, IMI, uh, MFA. All of those companies have been around for a while, and so producers are comfortable working with companies that they know. And so, you know, whenever you've got somebody, like they said, driving up in the white Malibu that has IRS on the side, eh, they're probably kind of going to shy away from you a little bit. So those are the things as, as we move forward I think obviously we need to, to take into consideration. Um, as I said earlier, we've, we've changed that. Last but not least, because Mike had to bring up that mobile app and how much fun he has had and how much it's a labor of love. We are also actually in the process and have been for the past year working on a mobile app to hopefully ease enrollment for producers into value-added programs, but really to go on and collect that data. So we'll be able to utilize those EID tags within this mobile app. Producers will be able to do that by, via pasture. If they want to keep track of their DNA records, they'll be able to do that on there as well. Search the Angus Association web base for Sires EPDs. Uh, in addition, they're going to be able, it's not just an Angus commercial app, okay? So they can literally put other breeds of bulls in there. They can use it for their cows of any breed. Uh, we, we really feel that producers don't know what they can't measure, and so we want to give them that opportunity to measure and this will probably be a very low or no cost, more like a no cost app, because we really want them to keep that data and utilize it so that we can all be profitable within the beef industry. That's one of the things that over and over that was, was overarching that everyone had said is, you know, we need to really preserve our industry. We're really concerned as we were listening on the long range strategic plan panels is that, you know, we're really concerned that it's not going to be here one day for, for Mike's grandson, that he's not going to have that same opportunity that he may have had uh, to grow up in that. And so that's the position that, that the American Angus Association has taken so that we can hopefully benefit all the cattle producers within uh, the industry. And then that's why, you know, with this, I don't want to say the word traceability, but let's just say so that we can all hopefully work together. One of the things several years ago, Scott Holt, which is one of Allflex's reps, and I had a very long discussion. We used to offer um, USA tags, visual tags, 
and then we went to the 982 series. But Scott and I really talked about all those tags that were being cut out at the feed yards. And so we decided, or I decided, I guess, to go more towards that 840 tag so that those producers uh, felt comfortable that those tags were actually being used, that, that they just weren't laying on the, on the ground because somebody chose to cut them out at the feed yard. And, you know, I guess that's one of the reasons we chose that direction is so that everybody would continue to have that information along that chain if, if they wanted it. Uh, so just know that we've not had a lot of pushback from that at all. I can only think of one producer who's not enrolled uh, over that time. And again, he was kind of similar to the gentleman that was in Louisiana, okay? So he was really concerned that somebody was coming with their helicopter and they were counting his cows. So anyway, we all kind of get, get a little bit uptight about some of those things. But at the end of the day, uh, just know that, you know, there is value in, in doing that. It may or may not be the answer at the end of the day. But uh, I sure am excited to explore that. And again, thank you all for, for so much work on these panels and, and um, working groups. It has really been a joy to work with so many of you and meet so many different people. Thanks so much.